Hi, I'm Nick, and I'm here still with Zeev talking about Essential App Protect. And last time, you said that it's all meant for developers and DevOps. So tell us about some use cases. Well, the first use case is checkbox simple security, pretty much for anyone out there. OK, I, I love you, but I don't believe you. So simplicity and security <laughs> don't really go hand in hand for me. Well, it is for us, because we're taking our 20 years of experience to make sure that you don't have to be an expert. OK, so then as a DevOps guy, I can. how do I get my updates? Uh, how do I stay on top of all security events? So you can do a couple of really easy API calls, and you're ready to go pretty much. OK, so you do all the pushes to me, or do I pull them from your repository? You don't have to do anything. We do all of it for you. Nice. OK, so I just kind of sit back and do a quick on-ramp for a couple API calls? That's pretty much. Even you can do that. <laughs> OK, fine. So API calls, are they consistent with the rest of the five cloud services, or did you guys build something custom? Yeah, we're consistent across all the F5 cloud services family. OK, cool. So how about you show me? How about I show you? So as you can see, this is the API reference here. You can fine tune all of these default protection configurations very easily. Easy, OK. So it's all through one single JSON? Uh, yeah, pretty much. You can actually update the JSON config right on the UI. Look at this section. OK, so JSON section, and I can just um, add, make the edits right here and click Update, or maybe even bring into my favorite editor or yeah, you know, exactly. Ansible. Exactly, or use Postman, right pretty much. Love it. OK, so, so how do you onboard then? So first of all, uh, one, we log in, and we retrieve our user session token, as you can see here. OK. Two, we subscribe to our service catalog. Okay. And three, the most important step, by the way, we create the essential app protect service and activate it. Okay, so one, two, three, uh, that's pretty simple. Yeah. For me, even, I can get on board with that. Mm -hmm. um, but now the question is how do I route the traffic to my instance? So, what you need to do first of all is you need to grab the CNAME value that we provide you. Okay, look at here. And a CNAME, this is from my app, um, whatever my name server, DNS provider that I have, I need to update the CNAME value there. Exactly, you got, got it. it. And you are providing me the CNAME value. We will be providing okay, the CNAME. Show me where it is. Okay, so as you see here, this is just super simple updating your DNS here, and pretty much you're all set. Got it. Okay. So once I grab this, my um, my environment is set up. Uh, I can do that, right? So how do I integrate this in with my existing CI/CD pipeline? If I, for example, use Ansible, can you show me an example, maybe? Of course. You can pretty much integrate this with any uh, orchestration tool out there, automation tool, orchestration tool out there. Cool. Let me show you here. Okay. So this is an example of an Ansible script. In this scenario, we pull up a number of blacklisted IPs from different sources. Mm. Then we grab all the configuration templates from a Git repository. Then what we do is we finally assemble all of that in one big JSON, the one you just saw, and then push it onto the instance. OK, and then I can see it running through the playbook. Uh, this is cool. So it's yeah. completed just a couple seconds. Uh, very, very cool, awesome. Uh, so I assume this is easy to get started if I'm a developer? Super easy. You go to this URL, you log in, and you pretty much start working with us. Love it. And if I want to get more info, I can always look at the API reference, right? Yeah, well, give me a call, dude. All right, I will. <laughs>